Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from AlexMercedCoder.dev and this video is to, well, show you about how to use TypeScript with React. Okay, and again, once you know how to use TypeScript, it doesn't really matter what you're working with. Um, TypeScript works the same way. Um, but with generally with like a framework like React or Svelte or Vue, you usually don't start from scratch. Usually you're gonna, there's going to be some sort of template somewhere. One of the easiest ways to get a TypeScript set up with any of these libraries is to use the actual the, the Vite project generator. So it's just npm init Vite. And that's going to open up this sort of thing. It's going to ask you what your project name is. We'll just say like React TypeScript. And it's going to ask you what framework. So this could be Vue, it could be React, it could be Preact, Blitz, Svelte, others. Okay, I think the others just gives you like a generic. Let me see what happens if you hit others. Okay, so yeah, it's just going to give you like the generic um you know any javascript kind of setup okay so i'm going to cancel that run that again say react ts we're going to choose react and see it's going to give us a bunch of different options i'm going to choose typescript with swc swc is just a different compiler um so instead of compiling with the typescript compiler it's going to compile with swc which is faster okay because i think it's been was written either in go and or rust i want to say rust Okay, so that now I'm just gonna CD into that folder. So CD into React TS, and then do an npm install to install everything. So it's gonna do that. Okay, and then otherwise we have a normal React project. But you can see instead of JSX files, you see TSX files. Okay, so that's gonna be the first difference. Okay, so when you're writing React, this is TSX, and let's see here other differences you may see. Again, not much to change. So you can see here it looks just like a normal react component okay um nothing too different far as we get to do a typescript um because we're not declaring too much in the way of variables here okay well let's see here let me do an npm run dev how do i know that take a look at the package.json to see what the scripts are and you can see here that there's a dev script so i'm going to use that dev script okay Okay, and now that's going to allow me to open up uh, a browser here, and I'll be able to go to the local host. It said 5173, so 5173. Okay, and there's your Vt React project. Okay, nothing too crazy. Okay, now let's create a component. So you can see what kind of happens with writing a component. Okay, so let's see here. Let's write a new folder, we'll call it component, or we should have called it components, but whatever, uh, new file, you know, we'll call it dos.tsx. Okay. And in here, all I'm going to do is just start writing my function. So export default function stuff. Okay, and there we go. Okay, so see, now I'm not getting any kind of issues. Now, let's say I want to declare props. Okay, so I declare props. Now, notice that props, it's like complaining. It's like, well, you, you're not telling me what your props is. Because, again, this is TypeScript. It needs to know what that props object looks like. So, generally, in those components, you're going to have to define an interface for props. So, I'll call it, like, stuff props. Okay. So you need to predefine what props this um, component should expect, which I think is a good thing because it forces you to think about, hey, what props am I going to send to this thing? Okay, so I'm going to say, hey, this one has to have a um, has to have a prop called word, and that word prop must be a string. Okay, it should also optionally have a cheese prop. Okay, so we're going to make that optional. And we're going to say that cheese prop should be a string. Okay. And then we'll have another op optional property called something. That could be a string or a number. Okay. So essentially that's like the shape of my props. So now I have to go over here and then type that props argument and say, hey, this props is a stuff prop, needs matches the stuff props interface. 
So it just means that it's gonna, the prop should be an object that matches this shape. So that's what an interface is. In TypeScript, it's a little bit different than interfaces in most other languages. But in TypeScript, an interface is essentially you describing the shape that an object should have. Okay? Cool. So now when I go to, like, if I say, hey, you know, props dot, see, it knows that props should have cheese something in Word. Okay, I don't have to, like, you know, usually if I didn't have TypeScript, it just wouldn't know. I would just have to remember what the thing I expect to have in props. Okay, that's the beauty of TypeScript. It's going to be able to give you those hints because you provided the types. Because I'm describing what props should look like, it's going to be able to help me write my code. Okay, but well, now let's just sit there. We're like return. Okay, and we'll just return a div. So we're going to say h1. Okay, uh, word. Otherwise, it's just like writing normal React code. You don't really see much in the way of differences. But again, that should be props.word. Okay. Then we're going to have a little thing here that says like, hey, if props.cheese is present, then props.cheese. Uh, otherwise, say no cheese. Okay, and then again with, and then we'll do another thing like this with props at something. Because again, since it's an optional, an optional property, there's a chance that it doesn't exist. So I want to make sure that I plan for that. Okay, cool. So there's my component. Okay, and again, it's been exported, export default. Okay, and again, the, the argument was typed. So now what's going to happen is if I go use this component, I go to app.tsx, I clear out the, the div in here. So I'm going to get rid of all this. And then I say, hey, I want to use that stuff um, component. Okay, so see, it automatically imported it for me, but look, there's a problem. It says property word is missing. Because remember, it said that word must be there. Okay, so see, now I'm going to get errors when I'm missing props, which is really nice. Because oftentimes, or sometimes, you're just using components and you don't realize it needs certain props because uh, you're using it from a third party library um, and you just won't have any idea until stuff doesn't work. But with TypeScript, you'll know right away. It's going to give you an error and say, hey, these things are missing. So now I know I need to add a word. So we'll say, Hello. Okay, there's my word prop, and it says hello. Okay, now if I add cheese, see it notices that I'm at uh, there's a cheese thing, and see I can see what it is. I can be like cheese, and this prop should be either a string or undefined. Okay, cheese. So now watch what happens if I try to call if I try to say cheese is a number. So if I say cheese is like the number one, see it's going to complain because in the interface for our props, I never said cheese could be a number. So it's going to complain. So I'm like, hey, cheese is supposed to be a string. OK, and see, it's happy because now, technically, this still matches the interface. OK, I'm passing props. It's still going to be an object with the word property, which it has to have. And the optional cheese property is a string. OK, how awesome is that? OK, and that's essentially. What you do otherwise is just like normal writing React code, and otherwise it's just like, you know, uh, normal uh, TypeScript, where you just type things that you normally type. But the big thing is going to be sort of, again, passing those interfaces for each of your props. Okay, that's going to be sort of probably the bulk of the types that you would have to write. Um, you know, uh, like again, you see something like here, you don't have to necessarily write... Um, props for state. Try to think where else props might pop up. Okay, otherwise you should be good. Okay. Um let's see here what else we got in here. Do we have a TS config in here? Yeah, here's our TS config.json if you're wondering what's what settings it's it's using. So there you can see what the settings are. And uh yeah, that's essentially all there is to really using TypeScript and React. Of course, you're going to run into lots of other issues as you run into more specific situations and specific use cases 
of things that might require you to write more complicated types because you know they have a lot of like objects that have maybe a lot of different possible shapes um you know trying to define a type that constrains something to only a limited number of possible values okay so for example you know what if i really wanted like cheese here not to just be a string i want it to specifically be one of certain options so i can say it has to be either gouda munster brie okay i could be that specific in the type there but then what happens if i go over here and i give it something like american see i'm still gonna get an error because this does not match my type so you can get pretty specific you and then again you get those nice little type hints um, that help you uh, make sure that your code is doing what you expect it to do or you're using it the way you expect it, it to be used Okay, so let me just change that back to like Brie And see it's gonna like that because it's part of the typing So hopefully you guys enjoyed that otherwise you make express apps like you normally would make express apps You write your TypeScript like you would normally write your TypeScript um, And then you know when it complains you make sure you go back and address the complaints Okay, that's the beauty of TypeScript. TypeScript is just having someone who's just going to complain a little bit more, so that way you can make sure you do more things right. Have a great day, and enjoy.